Hi there and welcome to today's class. For today's class, we'll be looking at the experiment, experiment 4 of the chemistry practical manual. And the topic here is volumetric analysis, all right? So you have all of this. Volumetric analysis comprises a number of techniques, which involves basically the measurements of volume of some standard solution of known concentration. All right, so uh, you could get all of this, this stuff here right i'll just jump straight into filling up the manual all right all right so when it comes to filling up the manual i think here it's like um the first part here all right this, this is exercise one and this is like the first part you'd have to work on but before this there's something important you have to see which is at this part here all right there's this formula here m1 v1 is equal to m2 v2 so let me explain this a bit before we start all right, so there's something called molarity. All right, so something called molarity, and it's represented by m. Now, here's what to know, please. By definition, molarity is simply the amount of a substance in a certain volume of a solution. All right, so the amount of a substance in a certain volume of a solution is known as the molarity. Molarity is represented by a capital M. And mathematically, molarity simply equal to mole all over volume. So we can say molarity is this ratio of the mole to the volume. Right? So mole is MOL, that's your SI unit, all over volume is measured in centimeter cube. Right? Either in centimeter cube or milliliter. All right? Um, all right, so volume is measured in dm cube. This, all right, so you have this. So we can have this as mole per dm cube. If I write this, this is equal to that means the S sign for molarity is mole all over dm cube, pronounced as mole per dm cube also written as mole dm to the power minus 3, all right? Aside this too, molarity is also measured in molar. So I'll write in for molar, for molarity is molar, and that's a capital M, all right? So I think you should know this one about molarity. Now, um, furthermore on this, if you say molarity is capital M, is equal to number of moles. Let's cut number of moles um, N, some 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 authors call it amount of substance. Some say uh, number of moles. It's the same thing, anyways. All over volume. So let me say V here. From here, if I cross multiply, of course this is all over one. So n times one here. I have n times one is equal to m times v, and that gives you m times v. So from here, what do we have there? It means that n times one is n is equal to m v so i have this very important formula when it comes to um, this topic that the number of moles is equal to the product of the molarity and volume all right all right so with this taken uh let me come back to this now what this formula means is this it means if i have um a certain um so let's say a certain solution with molarity m1 initial volume v1 and then that um, solution is now being, let's say the, the volume is now being increased by, let's say, adding a new solvent. Of course, if I add a new solvent, that means a new liquid, I expect that the volume would increase. So I'll have a second volume, let's say V2. And of course, the concentration would also reduce. All right. So the idea is this, as volume of the solution is increasing, the concentration or the molarity um, is reducing. Okay, so in a case where I have something like this, okay, let me use an, let me use um, something to illustrate this. Let's say I have um, right. Let's say I have this. Let's say I have a cup of water here. Let's say the the level of water is this. Or oh, let me make this bigger. All right, let me do a brief illustration. So let's say I have a cup here. I have this cup here, and I have water here. And I have, let's say, three dots here. Okay. 
So this is let's call this case one. Let me create a second case and call it case two. So let's do case two there. The same jar. Okay. But this time I increase the volume of water. So observe the volume in this case one. Observe this volume here. Now let me increase the volume of water there. If I increase the volume, what do you observe? This man will come somewhere here. It becomes higher. But then I'll still be having my three um, solutes here. Okay. Now let's assume, okay, let's call this case two. All right. So let's say case one here was salt water. So let's say I have a salty solution here or a salt solution that's salt mixed with water. Now, if I add more water to this, let's say I have a salt mixed with water here. That's a salt solution here. And I add more water into this. What do you observe? In this case here, the liquid here or this salt solution becomes less salty, right? Because I've added more water to it, it becomes less salty. So it's becoming less salty. That means that the concentration has been reduced. And that's what I'm trying to explain here in M2. So in M2 here, we are saying that the concentration or the saltiness in quotes of um, diagram 2 here has now been reduced. So it's not as salty as it was in case 1. But again, if you observe the volume of liquid, that's this, let's call this V2, right? The total volume of liquid here has increased. This was the initial volume. So I'm saying that if I increase the volume of a solution there, that the molarity or the concentration will be reduced. But yes, the volume would increase. So is there a way I can um, relate these two events or these two cases, case one and two? Yes. In what way? Let's use the small solute there. In case one, I had three solutes there, one, two, three. In case two, I had three solutes there, one, two, three. Or we can call it the number of moles per se. So I'm saying that the number of moles in case one, which was three, is still equal to the number of moles in case two, which is N2. All right, so I had three moles here. I also see I have three moles here. And if you look at the formula we just derived here, um, back here, we said moles is equal to what there? Molarity times volume. If this is true, it means that if I put this value here, N1 becomes M1 V1 is equal to N2 becomes M2 V2. All right, so this is what this formula is trying to tell us that we can just equate the number of moles and we have that. M1 V1 is equal to M2 V2. So that's what this formula means. All right, so let's see how we can apply this formula in solving problems, okay? All right, so this is, the, this is the, we have this case here. So this case says preparation of 0 0.1 molar or mole per dm cube um, sodium hydroxide solution by dilution of a more concentrated solution. So I'm going to dilute this. Um, okay, so this says you are provided with a 2 mo uh, molar sodium hydroxide. Please, I've said molar is the same thing as mole per dm cube. All right, solution. Calculate the volume of this stock solution, which must be added to a flask to make a 0 0.1 molar solution when diluted to 250 milliliter. Use the relationship given above to calculate the new volume. The relationship there is just simply the M1. V1 is equal to M2 V2. So we're asked to calculate the new volume of the solution. All right. So if you're asked to calculate the new volume of the solution here, um, for this, what do we have? So let's pick out our M1. M1 is the initial um, molarity, which is from here. They said you are provided with a 2 molar sodium hydroxide. That means M1 is 2M. So M1. Is equal to 2m. Okay. Is there any V1? They said calculate the volume of this stock solution. Which stock solution? The stock solution of the 2 molar sodium hydroxide. So the volume V1 of M1 is unknown. So V1 is equal to unknown. Okay. Proceeding. They said which must be added to a flask to make a 0 0.1 molar. So what do you observe here? We said when you add a um, solvent or a solution to this, what happens there? We said the molarity will do what there? Reduce. So observe that the molarity has been reduced from 2 molar to what? 0 0.1 molar or mole per dm cube. That means the new um, molarity M2 is equal to 
0 0.1 molar. All right, so this solution, when diluted to 250 milliliter, all right, so it was diluted to, so the second volume, V2, is equal to 250 milliliter. All right, so obviously in this case, we ask to find the value of V1. Let's recall our formula. So recall the formula, recall that M1 V1 is equal to M2 V2. So impute values, M1 is 2 into V1 is equal to M2 is 0 0.1 into v2 v2 is 250 all right 2 times v1 is 2 v1 is equal to 0, 0 0.1 times 250 is 25 so i have this okay to get v1 i'll divide both sides by 2 so divide here by 2 divide here by 2 this cancels this so v1 is equal to 25 divided by 2 i have so I have 12.5. Then check this. The unit is in milliliter. It becomes 12.5 milliliter. So that's the value. All right. With this now, I've gotten this value. Please, this calculation should be done in this space here. So this space provided here, the calculation should be done in this space. All right. So there's no space for me to write this one here. That's why I had to do it outside. So do your calculation in this area here, this space given. All right, so I think this is like, uh, this is exercise one. So if you look at this is exercise one, all right? There's a second exercise. Let's look at the exercise two. Exercise two says standardization of sodium hydroxide in aqueous form by titration with 0 0.1 mole per dm cube or molar HCl, hydrochloric acid, all right? I, all right, so let's look at how this works. I'm going straight to the, um, parts where we are asked to fill up all right okay so this is the part here so it's it's literally a titration practical all right all right so for me we already did the practical so i'll show you what my own reading was okay so this was this were the readings i got uh, let me reduce this. All right, so this were the readings I got from my own practical. Please, if your own reading is not like this, please do not change your work. All right. So whatever reading you have here, use it to do your own. Right. So just follow my steps in calculation, but do not change your values. Okay. So this is what my own table looks like. And what's the first question here? The first question said we should find the average volume of acid used in cm cube. Find the average volume of acid used. Now, if you look at this, we have volume of acid used. This is the um, column of volume of acid used. You have one, two, three. Now, if you look at this, observe that the first is a rough work. All right. So the first is a rough work. So when it comes to finding the average volume of the acid, I will only work with the second one, which for mine is 28.30. And the third one, which for mine is 28.90. So I'm saying that to calculate this, I will say the average volume of acid used. Average volume of acid used that will be equal to. So I'm taking just the second and the third one. I'm leaving out the first because the first was a rough work. Okay. So the second one here is 28.30 on that volume of acid used. The second one here is 28.30. So it becomes 28.30. Uh, let me draw my line first. So draw this line here. Okay, so it becomes 28.30 plus this one here, which is 28.90, 28.90. So this, since I'm working with two, all right, since I'm working with two values, I'll divide this by two. Okay, so let's sum this to what do we have there? If I sum this, I have 28.30 plus 28.90. That gives me 57.2. So this becomes 
as my numerator divided by my denominator here, which is what? 2. Alright, so let's divide this. What do you have? 57.2 divided by 2, I have 28.6. So that's equal to 28.6. They said it should be in what there? CM cube. So CM cube. Alright, so the average volume of acid used is 28.6 cm cube. So I have this. So this is the solution to the first part. So the first part says we should find the average volume of acid used in cm cube, which we have just done. Let's look at the next thing there. Now the now, the next thing here is equation of the reaction. What's the reaction? Now, go back to now go back to uh, um, exercise 2. Let's see what is reacting. Alright, so if you go to exercise 2, you see that this is the standardization of sodium hydroxide by titration with HCl. So, basically, it's HCl which is hydrochloric acid combined with sodium hydroxide, which is a base. So this becomes a neutralization reaction, right? For a neutralization reaction, we have that an acid is combining with a base to form what there, salt and water. So let's get this man done. So the equation of the reaction will be the acid first. So HCl, this would be in aqueous form plus the base which is sodium hydroxide also in aqueous form so in aqueous form to give what there salt and water in this case here the salt will be sodium chloride your normal table salt and this sodium chloride will also be in water that's aqueous form plus of course um salt and water so h2o all right so i have this my next task, of course, H2O is um, liquid or aqueous form, whichever. So I have this. Okay, so this is the equation, and not just equation, but the balanced equation of the reaction. All right, so you can see that on my left hand side, I have two hydrogen, the one before chlorine and the one after oxygen here. On my That's on my left hand side. On my right hand side, I have H2. All right, I have one atom of chlorine on the left hand side. On the right hand side, I have one atom of chlorine. I have. All right, so you can see that it's a balanced reaction, all right? Look at the left-hand side, the reactant. I have one hydrogen before chlorine and one hydrogen before oxygen. On the right-hand side, I have H2 there. Yeah? That's two hydrogen atoms before oxygen. So hydrogen is balanced. Same thing with sodium. I have one sodium on the left-hand side, one on the right-hand side. I have one chlorine on the left-hand side, one on the right-hand side. I have one oxygen on the left-hand side of the equation and also one oxygen on the right-hand side of the equation. So this becomes a balanced equation. Let's get molar ratio. So by molar ratio, I mean the, the, um, the coefficient of the reactants and products in a balanced equation. So since this is a balanced equation here, if I look at this, for HCl, the number here before HCl is, should be 1, right? Since there's nothing there, it becomes 1. 1 is 2. For sodium hydroxide here, there's no number there, so it's 1. So I have 1 is 2. For sodium chloride here, you can see that there's no number here, so that's 1. Is 2. For H2O water there, you can see that there's no number there, so it becomes 1. So in other words, the molar ratio becomes 1 is 2. Okay, let me use this. So 1 is 2, 1 is 2, 1 is 2, 1. That becomes the molar ratio. Alright, so we ask to find the next thing, we ask to find the concentration of the base in molarity. So when we ask to find the concentration of the base in molarity, what do we do? So here's the formula. They say we should use the mole ratio of, of acid to base. That, that's what it should be. The mole ratio of acid to base. Now, what does that mean? Record that we said, let me write this on outside. Record that we said N number of moles is equal to molarity times what there? Um volume. So if I'm thinking for acid, it means N of acid, number of moles of acid is equal to molarity of acid times molarity of base 
divided by said number of moles of acid to base so divided by um so divide this excuse me so divide this so come here divide this so divide this also by n number of moles of the base that will be equal to molarity of the base times volume of the base so this will be my formula all right okay so if you have this formula what do we do next we have to find what there the concentration of base in molarity which is same thing as the molarity of the base so let me write this one out here so i'm saying this that the number of moles of the acid all over the number of moles of the base is equal to the molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid all over the molarity of the base times the volume of the base so i have this all right so let's impute values if i go to my question here number of moles of the acid the acid is hydrochloric acid hcl the number of moles here is one the base here is sodium hydroxide the number of moles here is also one so the mole ratio becomes one is to one so i'll come back here for acid i have one all over for base i have one is equal to next up let's get the molarity of the acid all right molarity of acid let's find that value here so if i come to if i come to If I come to the question there, uh, let's see, go back to the question. Let's go back to the question there. So back to this, you can see that this was the standardization of sodium hydroxide by titrating it with 0 0.1 molar or molarity of HCl. So this becomes the molarity of the acid, 0 0.1 molar or 0 0.1. So back to my um, solving. All right, so molarity of the acid becomes 0 0.1 as shown there into volume of the acid. The volume of the acid is what we calculated here. Um, the average volume of the acid we calculated. All right, which is this? We got our average volume of acid used. This as 28.6. So we're using this value again. All right, this value we used earlier. This um, average volume of acid used, which was 28.6, that becomes the volume of the acid. All right, so volume of acid becomes 28.6. 28.6, okay. All divided by molarity of the base or concentration of the base, which I'm asked to find. So it becomes unknown. So molarity of the base into VB. VB is the volume of the base, which um I think we got that value. Volume of the base. All right, the volume of the base. So the volume of the base, let me show you where to get the volume of the base. So if you come back to this question here, it says pipette 20 to 25 milliliter of sodium hydroxide. That was the instruction. So the volume of the base used here is 25 milliliter. Um, depends on the group. Some group could use perhaps 21 milliliter. So when you did your practical there, check the volume that your group used. For mine, we use 25, which was the max because this in this experiment you're given the range of 20 to 25. My group we use 25 milliliter when doing the um, titration. So the volume of acid you use during your titration that becomes this. For mine, I'm using 25 here as instructed. So this is where I get my 25 as the volume of the base used. <laughs> So the volume of the base becomes 25. All right, so let's get the concentration of the base in molarity. 
So my tax here is simple. Do a cross multiplication. This times this. So it becomes molarity of the base. Uh, excuse me. Becomes molarity of the base times 25 times 1 is equal to this times this, which is 0 0.1 times 28.6 times 1. All right. So let's multiply this here. I have 25 times MB. That's molarity of the base. Becomes 25 MB is equal to 0 0.1 times 28.6 times 1. Gives you 2.86. So I have this. All right. My next task is to get the value of the concentration of the base, which I'll do by dividing here by 25. Also divide here by 25. From here, this cancels this. It means that molarity or concentration of the base is equal to 2.86. So I'm having 2.86 divided by 25. And this should give you about 0 0.1. So I have this as 0 0.1 approximately. Molarity is in molar. So my answer is 0 0.1 molar. I have this as my answer. All right, so come back and fill this. They said, calculate the concentration of the base in molarity. Our answer is 0 0.1 molar. All right, so M is already here. So 0 0.1. Next up, you're asked to find the concentration of the base in gram per dm cube. So how do you find that? That means I'm to convert my molarity from 0 0.1 mole, um, from 0 0.1 molar to a value in gram per dm cube. How do I do that? Um, the tax is simple. So my tax is this. I want to convert from what I have here is 0 0.1 molar. I want to convert this to a value in, uh, what was there? Let me check this again. A value in gram per dm cube. All right. To a value in gram per dm cube. So how do I solve that question? Then what do I do? Now, first things first, let's break it down. This is 0 0.1. We said 1 molar is same thing as what there? It's same thing as mole per dm cube. We want to convert this to a certain value unknown in gram per dm cube. So how do we solve this? Now, here's your answer. To convert from mole per dm cube to gram per dm cube, simply multiply the volume by the relative molecular mass of the compound. In this case, they mention the base. The base is sodium hydroxide. So I'll have to find the relative molecular mass of sodium hydroxide. And that's equal to, for sodium, the atomic mass of sodium is 23. So I have 23. Plus, for oxygen, the atomic uh, mass is 16. Plus, for hydrogen, that's this one here, the atomic mass is 1. So I have three elements that mix this compound. Sodium, whose atomic mass is 23. Oxygen, whose atomic mass is 16. And hydrogen, whose atomic mass is 1. So if I um, add this up here, I have my value as 40. Um, So it becomes 40 in gram per mole. Okay, so I'm having gram per mole. So if, if I look at this, if you observe this, observe that if I multiply, of course, the SI unit of relative molecular mass is gram per mole. Okay, so observe that if I multiply this value here, um, gram per mole, that's gram all over mole. If this multiplies mole per dm cube, mole all over dm cube what do you observe mole cancels mole so i'll be left with what there gram per dm cube and this is what i'm saying i said to convert from mole per dm cube to gram per dm cube simply multiply that value by what the relative molecular mass so hence that becomes 0 0.1 times the relative molecular mass of the base since they said for the base so it becomes 40 0 0.1 times 40 gives you what there? 4 in gram per dm cube. So that's all. The value is 4 gram per dm cube.
all right so back to this i'll come here so the answer here is four gram per dm cube so that's it all right so i have this answer now the next thing here says compare the molarity obtained with the molarity of sodium hydroxide in, ex in exercise one so let's go back to exercise one So if I look at exercise one here, um, from here we see that um, we were in exercise one we did the preparation of 0.1 mole or that's molar of sodium hydroxide solution. So in exercise in exercise one here, the two mole or the two molar sodium hydroxide was diluted to 0.1 molar. So our final I fi our final molarity here was 0.1 molar. That's in exercise one. Meanwhile, in exercise two, in exercise two, I still have that the concentration of the base in molarity is 0.1 molar. So what do I say? What do you observe? Observe that they are the same. So you can say the molarity obtained, or okay, let's say of the molarity of Sodium hydroxide obtained in this exercise, in this exercise, is the same, is the same as the molarity, same as the molarity of sodium hydroxide in exercise one all right in exercise one you can put the value there if you want which is 0 0.1 molar all right so this is the comparison so the answer is that the molarity of sodium hydroxide obtained in this exercise is the same thing as the molarity of sodium hydroxide in exercise one all right in exercise one which is um when i did my dilution now the next thing here is how accurately did you dilute the three molar sodium hydroxide to 0 0.1 uh, molar sodium hydroxide how accurately did you do that for my own mine was very accurate so i can say very accurately right very accurately that's how accurate you can go to you can still proceed by saying by adding by adding for for my experiments we added 12.5 milliliter of water all right of water that's what we use so for your own group you can ask your group members if you can still recall the volume of water you use for my for mine we use um 12.5 milliliter of water to dilute it all right so this is the answer to experiments four all right so we are putting in, in a lot of work to get this done so please you can support us by simply liking the video all right like the video all right um leave a comment on this video if you enjoyed it please tell us you enjoyed the video also suggest other experiments would you also want us to see don't forget to also subscribe to this channel for more content as well as share this video to your friends okay share to your friends in your different departments so this is how you can actually support us um thank you very much don't forget please like this video just hit the thumbs up button leave a comment tell us if you if you enjoyed the video and you understood also suggest other experiments you'd want us to do and of course subscribe to this channel please and of course share this video to your friends so they, they can also learn thank you very much and see you in our next class